Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. Good morning. Welcome back to a new video. In this because column 3164, find the number of good pairs 2 and also 3162, find the number of good pairs 1. It's the same problem. It's just that the constraints is different. In the problem 1, the constraints are very less. In the problem 2, the constraints are very tight. That's the only difference. Cool. Before watching this, you should be knowing what factors are, what devices are, how to compute them, how to compute them efficiently. Now, coming on back, they are saying that you are given two integers, array, nums1 and nums2, of length n and m. Length can be different. And I am also having an integer k. Now, for me, a pair ij is called as good if nums of i is divisible by nums of 2, like nums of 2j, nums 2j into k, which I can easily write as that if my nums1, nums1 i mod of nums 2j into k, if this is divisible, which means if this value, which means nums of 1 mod of this value right here, if this is 0, just same with saying that this portion is divisible or divides my nums 1, then I can say that this ij pair is good pair, is a good pair. So, one very, again, you know nums1 array, you know nums2 array, there, one, there is one very basic brute force approach, go and try for all ij pairs, two for loops, go and try for all ij pairs and that will work, giving you a complexity of O of n square. But if we see for the better constraints, which means the most restrictive constraints, O of n square would not work. So we have to think of something else. Now, when we saw this condition, very, very humanly, as in like with the normal human mind, I can simply break this condition down by saying nums1 i should be divisible by k and nums1 i should also be divisible by nums2 of j. Again, that's not much useful, but still, I can easily break it down just as a step, maybe. Again, that's not useful for sure. Now, uh, what you can easily see from this condition, again, remember this condition always. This is your prime main condition. From this condition, I can easily infer that I was earlier trying for some i and j combination. Now, I know I cannot try for i j combinations. I have to basically forget one of the index either j or i so let's say i forget j which means i only know i i'm only treating on my nums one of i which means that if i look maybe in the reverse order maybe from nums one of i if somehow i can predict what all possible values can come at this location then maybe i can do something again this is just hidden trials which we are trying right now so with this nums one of i i went on and said if I just replicate this entire condition, write it as nums1 of i mod x equal to 0, then I know that x, again, if nums1 of i, some number x is dividing my nums1 of i. So, this x is called as a factor or divisor of my nums1 of i. Cool. Now, if this x is my factor or divisor and I can easily just simply equate and say that my x should exactly equal to nums2j into k. This is a very big hint which you have got so far. If you have got that, pause it and just go and solve it. If not, then see. So we realize, okay, we can just try for all possible values for x. Again, what are x? x is a factor and we know the factor we can simply find in under root of what is a number. We can simply find the factor of any number in the under root of number time, right? So I can easily go and find the factor of my nums1 of i. And then I can also go and compute, again I know that this x is a factor which I am computing and I also know that this, is, this equates to nums2 of j. So I can also go and maintain how many such nums2 of j into k is are there. So I, can, I will maintain a map, this map will maintain that nums2 of j into k, how many such there, how many of them are there, which means the frequency of them. And that's the only thing. So we simply see that for every nums of i, I will simply go and find all the possible values of x, which will take again nums of i, it is just one element. I know I have n such elements because nums1 of i has error length of n. 
for every element, I will simply go and find the factors of that number, which we can easily find in the root of that value time. So for sure, the complexity will, will turn out to be n into root of the element. And maximum value of element, if we go and look back, it is 1e6. So it will be roughly around 1e8. Although for lead code, it generally gives a TLE. But we can do a bit pruning, which we will see later on. Bit pruning we can do. And also the test case are not that much great. So this passes. Again, this is actually the most optimal solution only. So it is more of that. They should have defined it to be a 1e5. Or maybe they are saying that 1e8 works. But none, like no ways. This is the most optimal approach which you have. Now, um, so we know everything. Let's simply dry run. What we will do? We firstly figure out that we need to maintain the frequency of nums2 of j into k. So I will do a nums2 of j into k. I am maintaining the frequency. Nums2 of j, as you can see, 4 into k. I am maintaining the frequency. So I figure out I will maintain the frequency of nums2 of j into k. This is the pre computation of the frequency I did for every of these nums2 of j element. I got this frequency map. Okay. Now my main task starts when I iterate on my nums1 array. In, when, I iterate, when I say I will it simply iterate on all the elements as you remembered, nums1, if you remembered, nums1 of i. So I'll simply iterate. And I'll say for every element in my nums1 array, if you remembered, nums1 array had 1, 2, 4, and 12. 1, 2, 4, and 12. Now, as you remembered, I told you this complexity is okay, will work. But your task is to just prune as much as possible, obviously to optimize as, as, as much as possible. Uh, so I realize that nums1 of k, sorry, nums1 of i should be divisible by k at least. So again, I cannot try this because for this I would need a j. So I cannot try this, but this I for sure know because k is constant and I'm iterating on nums1. So this is very obvious for me. With this, I can prune and tell if my element, which is nums1 of i, if it is not divisible by ek for sure bro continue from here itself don't even try to find the factors of this nums1 of i remember this is nums1 of i cool so if it is not even divisible by k there's no even point of trying the factors of this nums1 of i so how i checked it i just simply checked okay for nums1 of i we have 1 2 4 and 12 this is nums1 of i i know my k was a 3 so i'll simply check okay 1 more 3 it's a 1, 2 more 3, it's a 1, 4 more 3, it's a 1, 12 more 3, it's a 0. Oh, 12 is the only nums1 of i which actually is divisible by k. Now, I should continue and try to find the factors of 12, which is nums, again, 12 is nums1 of i. So, I will go and find the factors of 12. Finding the factors is like this. If you don't know how the factors work, what are factors, how to find it, what's the most optimal approach, all that stuff, all the edge cases, go and watch that one video which I told, this one. Now, when we will go and find the factors, again, this is a root of element operation time, which it will take. It will go and find the factors. The factor simply says, okay, I will go and try up till the F point. And that too, I will simply say a factor. If, if let's say I'm trying for F. If F is a factor, then N by F is also a factor. Which means if I have a number 1, so if I, if I have a number 12, if 1 is a factor for it, then 12 is also a factor. If 2 is a factor of it, then 12 by 2, which is 6, is also a factor. If 3 is a factor of it, then 12 by 3 is also a factor, which is 4. So, I know if f is a factor, then n by f is also a factor. Or I should say, element by f should also, is also a factor. But, I said, if f is a factor. So, if my element mod f is equal to 0, only then I can say f is a factor. If yes, then element by f is also a factor. So I'll simply do a next pruning and say if element mod f, which means if f is a factor of element, then only go and try for next stuff. But if not, then simply continue for the next factor f. If the f is a factor, so I can say one of the factors is f itself. Another factor f2 is element by f. Right? Okay. Now I just simply need to know how many of such factors are there? Because if you remember, I have maintained the count of nums2 of j into nums2 of j into k. I just have to know the count of such because I know that this, this is simply saying, okay, x. x was a factor. I got the x. I need to know the count of such x, which I have already maintained above. 
So I'll simply go and ask that bro. For number 12, you went on try for all these Fs, 1, 2 and 3. All these are factors. So you got to know 1, 12, 2, 6, 3 and 4, which is F element by F, F element by F, F ele element by F. Then you will go and check. Okay. For map of 1, I have a count of 0. For map of 12, I have a count of 1. So map of 12, I have a count of 1. Map of 2, count of 0. Map of 6, count of 0. Sorry, map of 6, count of 1. Map of 3, count of 0. Map of 4, count of 0. With this, I would easily get to know. And I will simply can add my answer. So you can simply see, I'm adding F1 map and I'm adding F2 map. But you'll also see one edge case that I am making sure F1 is not equal to F2. Why is that the case? If you remember, again, this we have taught, taught exactly here also that for the numbers, for example, 36, I can try for all the Fs as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, in which 5 will not be a factor for sure. This will give, okay, F element by F, F element by F, F element by F, F element by F. But for 6, F and element by F, both are same. Both are same number. So, if we will not put this condition, we might end up double counting it. So, as to prevent double counting of the value, we just took and said, okay, if F1 is not equal to F2, which means both the factors which we have found out, which means F and element by F, if they are not equal, only then actually add the contribution. And that's the answer. This is the simple code which we will write. Cool. Now, let's see the code uh, at one place. We, take, we kept an unordered map which will keep the frequency of element into K, which is nums of 2 into J into K. Cool. Now, I went on and get the answer. Again, it is long, long, LL, long, long. Then I went on to element. Then I check, okay, simple pruning. If element mod K is not equal to 0, so it's no way possible. If yes, then okay, I'll go on to the factors of this number element. For every factor, I'll say, okay, if that is an actual factor or not, which means, okay, this is a F. But if it's a factor or not, that's a question. So I'll simply verify if it's a factor or not. If yes, I will find the factor, both the factors, which is corresponding to this F then I will get their contribution. And that is how I will get the answer. Again, time will be O of N into root of element. I get root of max element, which is in our case 1E6. So this will be actually 1E8. And again, space, uh, we have only used the space to keep track of all the elements and I can have M distinct elements. So for sure, the space is O of M. And that's the answer for us. Cool. I hope you guys got it. If yes, then please do smash the like button and Please to make sure join the Discord for proper coding, proper collaboration and be motivated. Bye-bye. Take care.